I'm gonna go through five of the top misconceptions I hear about the merge. The first one is this. There is a misconception that you can withdraw your staked ETH after the merge. Is that correct or incorrect and why? Uh, it's incorrect. So the merge is basically only the transition to proof of stake. You're going to need another upgrade uh, to have withdrawals. And the reason there is just the merge is already the most complicated change we've ever done to Ethereum. And we wanted to limit it as much as possible to make sure that it goes well. Um, so the upgrade after the merge will have withdrawals and there's already specs being worked on for it. Um, yeah. So if you have staked ETH, guys, what this means is post-merge, it'll still be locked in place. You will not be able to withdraw it, but there will be another upgrade coming down the, the pipeline in the order of, I don't know, months are we talking about or years? And that will be another uh, upgrade post-merge, post maybe six months time range, six months to a year, something like that. Is that what you expect, Tim? Yeah, basically, that's usually what we what we do. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Uh, the second misconception that we hear so often is that the merge will lower transaction fees. There's a little bit of truth here, but it's just a tiny bit of truth. And can you tell us about this? Yeah, yeah, basically, can you tell us about this misconception? Uh, so in short, it, it, it won't basically like uh, proof of work versus proof of stake doesn't change the throughput of the chain. Uh, Ethereum strategy to lower transaction fees is uh, roll ups and making it as cheap as possible to use them. And so that'll be a whole other series of upgrades, which is also starting to be worked on. Okay, so the merge will not lower transaction fees, folks. Uh, number three misconception, the merge will lower ETH issuance. Um, actually, that one's not a misconception. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that. a, that's actually true. Um, so proof of work issuance, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but it's like 4.7% like, down to 4.6% or 0.46%. Yeah. Something so like and the way I, the way I look at it, um, is if you go on the ether scan, they have like an issuance chart for mainnet. Um, and there's like four lines in it. There's like proof of work issuance, proof of work uncle issuance, uh, proof uncle rewards issuance, and then the E2 issuance, the beacon chain. And so if, if you look at that, like you can literally remove the three first lines and you just have the the, the proof of stake issuance left. And it's about a 90%, like the proof of stake issuance is about 10% of the total. So it's about a 90% reduction. It varies like on a daily basis, uh, you know, there's some error bars on these numbers, but like, yeah, there is a massive issuance reduction. So putting that in misconception format, some people think that the merge will increase ETH issuance and it won't, it will decrease no. ETH issuance, uh, total ETH supply, at least issuance over time will be decreased over time. Uh, number four, there's a misconception that users applications will have to do some work to upgrade, maybe click a button and download something. What is that misconception? What will users and applications need to actually do uh, right. post merge? So assuming, so again, if you not, if you run a node or you're a staker or you're an infrastructure provider, like you definitely need to do stuff. Blog.ethereum.org has the whole list. If you're just using Ethereum, like sending transactions or deploying smart contracts, um, basically you need to do nothing. Like everything will keep working as is. Um, the one small thing I'll say for smart contracts is if you, you use the block time, uh, or if you use the block number as a like proxy for time, that changes a bit. So like today blocks are about 13 seconds with a lot of variance. After the merge, they're always like a multiple of 12 seconds. Um, so like for some yield farms and like APY products, like that matters because if you calculate like a certain APY over a certain number of blocks after the merge, you're gonna be issuing it slightly quicker. Um, but it's it's not like a you don't have to do anything that will just happen. Uh, you should be aware of that. And, and if you want to upgrade your contracts, you, you should. But that's really like the only the only thing that, that can affect how applications work. So if you are a regular everyday normal user not running a uh, ETH node, there's nothing you will have to do. If you're just using MetaMask, continue yeah. just using MetaMask. You won't have to click any buttons. There's no upgrade. Yeah. It will roll over automatically. Yes. Um, the fifth misconception is you can't run a node, an Ethereum node, without staking. So without 32 yeah. ETH, uh, for example. Can you tell us about why is that a misconception, Tim? Yes. Uh, so there's two types of nodes right, on the network. There's validators, which are nodes that produce blocks, which are like miners today. To run one of those, you do need to run, uh, you do need 
to put 32 ETH um, and every 32 ETH gets you like an extra validator slot. And you can think of it as a lottery, like every block there's a lottery and uh, your 32 ETH is like your tickets to like potentially produce the next block. Um, so if you want to do that and be a validator on the network, you, you, you need that capital. If you want to run a node on the network, that's different from being a validator. And what running a node means is you actually verify that the blocks and transactions that these validators create are valid. So validator is like a really bad term because the validator doesn't just verify. What they do, all the nodes verify on the network. What the validator does in addition to that is they produce the block. Um, and this is why like in MEV, they call them block producers, not validators. Um, but if you're just a normal user and you want to make sure that the blocks that are being propagated on the network and produced by validators are actually correct. And that, for example, you know, a, a staking pool doesn't collude to print itself a bunch of ETH. It is free to do that. So like you can just download, you know, your consensus layer client, your execution layer client and run that. It will sync to the chain. It will verify that the history of that chain, you know, the rules were followed, or at least that there was like strong agreement amongst everybody that the rules were followed and then today you know like once you are synced every new block it will run it and make sure that like every transaction in that block uh meets the rules of the protocol um and that's like really important it's because the only the kind of biggest uh blocker that we have to validate there's colluding and changing the rules of the protocol is having a large number of nodes that are run by non-validators who just like act as a check and make sure that they're not changing the rules of the protocol uh, behind closed doors. Um, so if you run a node, you do contribute to the security of the network. Uh, you don't have to pull up capital to do it. It's a public good then to run a node, a non-validating node. It's kind of like, you know, voting in your local elections is sort of a, you know, a public good and a check on power. Yeah, that's correct. Hey, we hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, head over to Bankless HQ right now to develop your crypto investing skills and learn how to free yourself from banks and gain your financial independence. We recommend joining our daily newsletter, podcast, and community as a Bankless Premium subscriber to get the most out of your Bankless experience. You'll get access to our market analysis, our alpha leaks, and exclusive content, and even the Bankless token for airdrops, raffles, and unlocks. If you're interested in crypto, the Bankless community is where you want to be. Click the link in the description to become a Bankless Premium subscriber today. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for in-depth interviews with industry leaders, Ask Me Anythings, and weekly roll-ups where we summarize the week in crypto and other fantastic content. Thanks everyone for watching and being on the journey as we build out the Bankless Nation.